in different counties, different jurisdictions, and different states utilized it. And then the province of Quebec wanted to utilize it. And uh, currently, that went on until about 2007. 2007, what it ended up happening was the Illinois uh, Supreme Court said that they wanted a four-hour program, a uh, four-hour program that would utilize not only the effects of divorce on kids, but to give some concepts of children's development. And they mandated that. And so all the counties began utilizing a program similar to this. Uh, at this time, I believe we have 30 counties in Illinois that utilize it. And then, so how does it work? Is there a website that is associated there with There is a program? website. You can look and find, you can find out a wide variety of information on that. You can go to Children First Foundation. And I brought a copy of the website here. It's www.children, C-H-I-L-D-R-E-N, the numeral one, S-T, foundation, dot org. And if you go there, you can see the program. And then what had happened was, is because we deal with a lot of people, uh, the advantage of the pro program I, is clearly you'll get a eight, ten people together. And we usually do, and we do not have the same, you know, in other words, the mother and father there at the same time. Mm -hmm. Originally we thought that was, a, a, what would happen is that there'd be this mess of fighting and arguing. So if, what happened was that didn't occur. Rather, people didn't talk. And so what we ended up doing was we made a, a stipulation that they couldn't come together. And uh, most of the time, people would come. They would come on two nights. They'd come on, in the beginning, it was an hour a night. Now it's two hours a night. And they would see a series of vignettes. And then there would be discussion afterwards. And the vignettes were three, four minutes long. And they would talk about scenes from a divorce, scenes from a marriage. Uh, then from there, what had happened was when it expanded, it went to two hours a night, and that was because the Supreme, Illinois Supreme Court had mandated that. Uh, program can now be accessed on the web, because we had a lot of times when we deal with Scott Air Force Base, where a lot of people couldn't get to the program. Right. And so now they can take it also on the web. And if you access the Children First Foundation, you can see the program on the web. Do you get a certificate or some type of credit for doing this? In Illinois, on the programs where it's been enacted, if you have kids under 18, you can't get a divorce until you go through the program. Now, is this the same thing as a parenting class, or is that something in addition it's, to the program? It's, it's an educational class. By law, we couldn't have, you, we're not mandating therapy. In fact, we're mandating something for the kid. Right. In other words, we're showing what can be done, what can be stopped the fighting, what can be stopped the warring. Because when you're dealing with kids in divorce, you know, the, the focus needs to be on them. The focus of how to stop some of the pain, how to stop some of the harm. Because divorce is, has become a fact of life. Average marriage lasts seven years. Mm -hmm. 40% of all kids will be in a divorcing situation. When you talk about that, what you're talking about is these individuals, these kids, what can we do to make life better? Because divorce is extremely traumatic. And what happens in a divorce, I mean, you, you can look at all kinds of behavioral characteristics. For example, most kids, when they're going through a divorce, they're going to lose, you're going to have at least a half grade to a, a full grade drop during the period of the divorce because of the added stress. That's how come we decided that it would be a neat idea if we could do something to stop some of the pain, stop some of the fighting. Now, uh, have you worked with uh, guardian ad litems in this program? Or what what uh, court personnel assist you in this, if there's any? Uh, originally? Well, uh, the way it was started is is that, uh, wow, when we put together the program at the very beginning, we had a list of individuals. We had a variety of judges from the 20th Judicial Circuit. We had Pat Fleming, 
later had, who was chief judge over there, uh, Steve Kernan, Stephen Kernan, had Annette Eckert, who started off as uh, an attorney, who is now one of the judges over there. And on the foundations board, we always have one of the family court judges. And with that, we always have a concept of what's going on. And when they go through the program, you get a certificate. And you can't have the divorce finalized if you have kids under 18 until you get that certificate. You mentioned earlier that you dealt with CASA. And for those individuals who don't understand what that acronym is, what does it stand for? And what type of work would a CASA person do or assist with? CASA, CASA's court-appointed special advocates. Uh, with that, these are the eyes and ears of a child in court, uh, similar to a guardian ad litem. And what they're going to do is they're going to present their, their interviews, their perceptions to the judge in a report. And they may testify at, at a trial. And what happens with CASA is there's each child, yeah, well, I'm on the board of the of St. Clair County CASA. And what happens is when we have a CASA with a child, that CASA will follow that child throughout the entire divorce hearings, or not so much divorce hearings, many times throughout the abuse hearings. And in the abuse hearings, what happens on that is, is that uh, many times a child, whether it be Division of Children and Family Services or whether it be Division of Family Services over here in Missouri, they might have multiple workers. There's only one CASA. And so that CASA may be the one thing that is stable for that child throughout that court period. Now, when you say follows a child around, how, what is the um, contact between the child and the CASA person? They'll go see. They may go to the school. They may make sure the medical. They're going to look at what they feel is in the best interest for that child and give those perceptions back to the court. Now, is a CASA person a licensed attorney? No. CASA uh, is, is a volunteer. Uh, say if this is in St. Louis, St. Louis County has a CASA. St. Louis has a CASA. We over in Illinois, where I primarily practice, we have CASAs. And uh, when I talk to uh, uh, Jim Radcliffe, Judge Radcliffe used to be head of juvenile, his concept was, his wish was is that we would have a CASA for every child in any abuse setting because that is the eyes and ears of the court. Now, what's the difference between a CASA and a guardian ad litem? Guardian ad litem is an attorney. A CASA may not be. They, other than one's a licensed Casa's attorney, one's free. not. <laughs> the guardian ad litem better be getting paid. So that, does anyone pay for a CASA services? Is it the state or? No. On the, so the court won't award no. any fees to be paid? No. How does one get a CASA um, individual appointed? Uh, the judge appoints. If it's an abuse and neglect case, if it, I, and I can, I'm most familiar with Illinois, most familiar sure. with St. Clair County. What would happen is that at that time, uh, Judge Brandon is the head of uh, juvenile court over there. He would appoint a CASA, and then CASA would follow that child. And would send a report and, would, and may very well testify at that child's hearing. Now, can a CASA person testify as to what is in the best interest of the child or children? Yes. And can they um, create a report to submit to the court? Yes. And is there a difference between what the CASA would submit versus what a guardian ad litem may submit? May not be. I mean, maybe a difference of opinion. Maybe a difference of opinion, but may not be. And then, is this something that could be made on motion by someone's attorney, or is it something that's just automatic? In Illinois, is it something that's automatic under statute that the judge appoints, or does it have it's to be on motion? It's not by statute, motion? but what happens is, in juvenile court in Illinois, the judge always has the option to appoint a CASA, and he primarily does, or he, she primarily does. Now, does a guardian ad litem have to appoint it as well, or can you just have a CASA and no guardian ad litem? I'm not quite sure. Usually happens you have both. Yeah, both. Now, um, you also, uh, we indicated earlier that you do child custody evaluations. What all that goes into a child custody evaluation? Okay, I only do child custody evaluations if I'm appointed by the court. I won't do a child custody if one attorney or the other calls. 
reason why I don't is because there's too much bias already. Sure. 